Now we're going to move on to Elliot. Elliot has, Elliot Jacobson, Dr. Elliot Jacobson, Professor Elliot Jacobson, has a climate casino. I think that's the, the name of his blog. And his newest was, What the F Happened to the Methane Monster? And, well, Jennifer, can you give us just a little background on you and the methane monster and your relationship with that monster? Oh, did I have a relationship? I thought I was running for my life. Yeah. Yes. Terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was something that really gripped my attention for a long time. And finally, I got kind of uh, tricked into creating the methane monster and the rest is history. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the methane monster hasn't gone away. And the reason Elliot is writing this article is because it's sort of like not paid as much attention to right now right. in the news. Except for us. But, yeah, <laughs> Except that's for you right. and me, nerdos. That's right. And, and Elliot. All right, so I'm going to start it because he, Elliot does really well with this. He puts links in to go back to a different article to reference it. So we're really going to, we're going to learn about stuff tonight guys trust us two years mm -hmm. ago methane was the rising star on the hit list of doomer messaging and it was easy the methane monster had so many different heads to choose from from natural sources we had permafrost methane east siberian arctic shelf east ass methane methane bubbling up from the lake and ocean bottoms and from an increase in termites Wow. I bet you didn't know that out there, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, from anthropogenic sources, we had methane from pipelines, fracking, animal agriculture, rice farming, landfills, LNG leakage, and more. Times were good for the methane-centric <laughs> doer. And there was even a Nova documentary, and that documentary got 11 million views. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not going to go to that, but... um. But that, yeah. So, and then about a year ago, except of course for Jennifer and I and Environmental Coffee House, it stopped. <laughs> the media moved on from methane to the next big shiny climate change disaster. And there's been a long list to choose from. And Arctic sea ice extent, global two meter temperatures, sea ice temperatures, Thwaites glacier fires, cyclones, floods, heat waves, droughts, and poof. No one <laughs> is talking about methane anymore. Imagine that. <laughs> so he said, before you go on, he's been advised by a reader that you should read his other article is methane catastrophe happening right now, which I'm, I, I can go, I can reference it, but I'm not going to do that at the moment because uh, I know where I want to reference it. So here we go. Methane is a greenhouse gas that is responsible for about one third of the current rise in global temperatures from 1850 to 1900 IPCC baseline, unlike CO2, which can persist in the atmosphere for millennia. Methane tends to break down much faster. Depending on local atmospheric conditions, the over under for a lifetime of a uh, methane molecule is about 110 months. Now remember his his page, his website is called Climate Casino. Mm -hmm. So the over under, all right? Because oh, yeah. methane breaks down so much faster than CO2, curbing anthropogenic methane was viewed as a quick fix to buy time to do something meaningful about CO2 without breaching the Paris limit. This strategy led to the so-called Glasgow Pledge, written in 2021 at the very end of 26, COP26. So here's the summary. 103 countries, including 15 major emitters, signed up to the Global Methane Pledge, which aims to limit methane emissions by 30% by 2030 compared to 2020 levels. So at the most basic level of data, total atmospheric methane keeps rising. The graph from NOAA shows methane from July 83 through June 2023. Now that's 40 years. And in that time, methane has risen about 300 parts per billion. And in the last 12 months alone, methane rose from 1905.19 parts per billion to 1917 parts 
a, a point eleven parts per billion. There is little doubt that methane will exceed nineteen thirty parts per billion by the end of the current twelve month cycle. Well, this is it. Now we had already seen another one earlier in the presentation mm -hmm. that where it goes down, and we're going to learn about why that happens. The next level of analysis is to see how fast methane is growing. The bar graph from NOAA shows the annual global increase of methane. Unfortunately, the graph is only updated once a year, usually in April, to account for data from the previous calendar year. See the spike up here? And then a little bit, pretty low down there. Although one of the most crude metrics available, it seems clear that the peak reached in 2021 was part of the reason for the global methane media and doomer freakout. Methane appeared to be skyrocketing. Remember that, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we had COP26 and the Glasgow Pledge. And sure enough, a year later, the data showed the start of the dead, uh, decline in the rate of increased methane. So should we be freaking out? Or has methane monster been decapitated? <sighs> to find out, I'm going to redo NOAA analyses, taking into, a, into account the atmospheric half-life of methane and resolving this on a monthly basis, which I thought was way cool. Thank you, mm. Elliot. I want to take a moment to do a bit of simple math to illustrate the focus of my analysis. Suppose methane was 1905.19 parts per billion in June 22 and 1917 parts per billion in June 23. Well, what really happened? How much methane was really added to the atmosphere? If you're like NOAA, you just subtract the two numbers and come up with 1192. So you see the difference. Okay. Very mm -hmm. simple, very easy. And then you say that methane grew by 11.92 parts per billion over the last year. And you just plot that point. Well, that's wrong. And mm -hmm. the reason it's wrong is the short atmospheric lifetime of methane. So if methane has an average lifetime of 110 months, then after 12 months, we should expect the original amount of the 1905-19 parts per billion to be reduced by some amount of natural decay. To put it simply, if you know the amount of methane in a given month, call it old methane, then the amount of methane that will still be present the following month is approximately given by, there's the new methane equals <laughs> old methane times one half of one one hundred tenth. Okay. If we use the same formula, plug in the numbers, starting at 1905.19 parts per billion in June 2022, then the methane is reduced by a natural decay to 1766.45, natural uh, by June 23. So the only way we could get an actual reading of the 1917.11 in June 23 is for the amount of methane added to the atmosphere over these 12 months to be the 19.17, right? Minus the 1766 that he factors in. So the difference is 150. It's different. Mm -hmm. He, he, yeah. Do you have something? Because uh, it, it, he has to count the uh, degradation rate. Right. So that's what he's got in there. Right. Yeah. He's being more specific. Mm -hmm. And so he redid the NOAA chart using the fact that atmospheric methane is constantly delaying. And we've talked about this, Jen, in our mm -hmm. shows before. Um, I also use some smoothing to account for the natural yearly cycle. And I use their full monthly data not just yearly numbers. Putting that together, here is my improved one. You want to talk about this one, Jed? Well, you can kind of see here where it was really kind of in the quote plateau area. And this is the growth of methane year over year. This is methane change. And in 1998, there was a super El Nino. And mm -hmm. at that time, it appeared and it was kind of an optical illusion because there had been so much heating in the super El Nino of 98 that global warming had just kind of ceased. 
that really what that was is just that in between period and in all the, all that heat had gotten added to the atmosphere, but that also affected the methane emissions. And you can see that right here. So um, the orange line there is the Glasgow Pledge and 30% by 2030. Do you think we'll get there? Let's find out what the math says. Methane growth peaked in August 2022 at an annual rate of 160 parts per billion. Since that time, the rate of methane growth has been slowing down, and in uh -huh. June 2023, it had fallen to an annualized growth rate of 157 parts per billion. The rate of methane growth has been slowing down for the last 10 months. Let's be clear here. The amount of methane in the atmosphere is continuing to rise. It's the growth rate and the rate of increase of methane that's decreasing. Because of this, eventually something interesting has to happen. And here's the fun bit of math, <clears throat> for me anyway. <laughs> And he says, it's fun. we can project this all into the future. Oh, joy, oh, rapture. <laughs> if the current slowdown fun. trend continues, oh. then methane will peak at 1,966 parts per billion in November of 2027. Atmospheric methane will then gradually start to fall. We will reach the Glasgow Pledge of reducing anthropogenic methane by 30% in September of 2020, By December of 2034, methane will once again be under 1,900 parts per billion. This is a very nerdy thing that he's doing. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. The following graph <laughs> illustrates this prediction and you can see that he's showing uh -huh. that methane falls off and it actually decreases. But that doesn't seem right to me. No. Well, fans, yeah. that's more than enough fairy dust and mathematic. Now for some reality. The first big question is, if the slowdown of methane growth is due to proactive climate actions that will eventually get us to the Glasgow Pledge, or if it's a consequence of something else, the answer is it's something else. Yeah. The formula explains it all. The formula is longer atmospheric lifetime for methane equals more methane. Well, yeah. It's worth remembering that if we had a lockdown just before that huge 2021-2022 jump, the massive rise in new methane may have been an artifact of the pandemic's impact on air travel, which led indirectly to a longer atmospheric lifetime for methane and the appearance of significant reduction when there was none. Hmm. So he is citing <clears throat> that yeah. there is an article here called COVID-19 lockdown emission reductions have the potential to explain over half of the coincident increase in global atmospheric mm -hmm. methane. Interesting. Yeah. Likewise, the tropical fires in Brazil, which have declined with Brazil's new government, may have led to a depleting hydroxyl radicals, the primary scrubber of atmospheric methane. So get this, if there is a depletion of hydroxyl radicals which scrub the methane, then the methane persists in the atmosphere. Less hydroxyl equals longer atmospheric lifetime equals more methane. Methane is much more sensitive to global heating than previously thought. I explore other potential reasons for the 2021-2022 peak having to do with a longer atmospheric lifetime for methane. The second big que question is, if the East Siberian Arctic shelf, permafrost, or some other natural source of methane is going to light off, instigating a multi-gigaton release that will make all human actions inconsequential, short answer, yes. Yes. The methane it turns bomb. out. <clears throat> it's going to happen. Oh, yay. It turns out there's new information coming out 
all the time. For example, and he cites these two articles called mm -hmm. Arctic's melting glaciers reveal hidden methane time bomb. We might have even covered that. Sorry. I think we did. <laughs> yeah, mm. we did. <laughs> yeah. And mapping methane emissions from rivers around the globe reveals surprising sources. Mm -hmm. So those are two articles Very he's citing. The third big question is, what impact the current ENSO cycle will have on methane? Yep. And you guessed yeah. it, warmer weather during El Nino helps create more equatorial fires, which creates more carbon monoxide, which cannibalizes hydroxyl radicals, which increases the atmospheric lifetime of methane, which increases the total amount of methane. It's all connected. Interesting. So another article he's citing here, impact of El Nino Southern Oscillation on the interannual variability of methane and troso tropospheric ozone. My God. The troposphere, so, darling. The troposphere, the troposphere. Mm -hmm. Like so a just a little bit of reading of practically any sensible article will show you that the peak growth of methane reached in 2021, 2022 was an artifact of the moment and it's coming back. So here's my over under anthropogenic methane won't slow down in until global civilization slows we down. Slow down. And little things like the feedback loops from unattended fires and huge decline in air travel could negate that slowdown by lengthening methane's lifetime. So there's a wash. Meanwhile, we have more than enough natural methane bombs with their fuses lit, windows of opportunity welded shut, and canaries in the coal mine dead and buried. In other words, methane bombs will go off. My over under, there's none. It's all over at this point. Wow. I know why the media stopped its coverage of methane. It's not sexy. It's not bloody. It's not funny. And mm. it's hopeless. Meanwhile, there are just too many other stories wow. that sell better from politics to wars, to religion, to social dust yeah. justice, to celebrities, to royals, to sex scandals. The whole planet of humans is pretty fucked up right now. And I guess we will take <clears throat> the planet of humans that are fucked up, not us, of course. And we will give them the environmental coffee house flush of the day. Yeah. I thought that was really good. I enjoyed reading it and trying to figure out everything. And I, I, it was, thank you, Elliot.